Hey everybody, Will here, and today we are going to be looking at the Microsoft HoloLens 2, and as always, this is going to be an educational perspective, but if you find any part of this video insightful, interesting, or maybe helpful in your purchase of a HoloLens unit, first off, let me know in the comment section below, then hit that like button, and if you are new to the channel, please consider subscribing and hitting that notification bell, as it definitely helps us out here at EduCenter. The HoloLens 2 is an augmented reality device. If you're not familiar with what that is, it basically it's taking the digital world and it's overlaying it into the physical world for the user. But in terms of education or the classroom setting, specifically that fifth through eighth grade, or we could push it further, right? That fifth through 12th grade, this has a very special, unique place. And I say that being honest because this is a $3,000 device. It's not going to be for every school. There is a level when I let students use this device that terrifies me that I'm putting so much expensive technology on their head, uh, it falls off and breaks, right? I'm out $3,000. So that is something to keep in mind. That being said, let's talk about the pros and cons of this being used in the classroom. One of my favorite aspects of this in the classroom is the fact that it conforms to any user's head. With this little wheel on the back here, you can tighten and the strap here for added security. It fits any person's head and it's just a matter of flipping down the visor and making sure it fits kind of like a set of glasses on the bridge of their nose. My other favorite thing about this is just the wonder and amazement that happens with any person, any age. I kid you not, I've had fifth graders who've tried this and I have had 60 year olds who have tried this device and it's always the same reaction the first time they put it on. This device uses a set of four cameras on the front that are doing hand tracking and tracking the visual space and mapping it. It also has a camera right here for allowing pictures and videos. And then it has two internal cameras that are looking at your eyes, doing eye tracking and so many cool features in such a tiny pack device. It's lightweight, everything about it is great. In the classroom setting itself, I've seen this use in my middle school already. I've personally used it for my 3D design class. So the kids develop in SketchUp, we load it up in SketchUp Viewer, and then they're able to take their models, expand them to the one-to-one -one scale that I'm looking for, and start figuring out where they're going to change things. And that kind of design iteration is key. In the science classroom, I got our science teacher to use this for one of his lessons, and it was amazing. He pulled up the human body system so he could talk about the nervous system in here, and then he let kids manipulate the human nervous system, pull it out piece by piece, and they got to talk about it and explore it, and they got to have a cadaver in person in middle school. Let's talk about some of the things I like actually hate about this unit. First off, it gets uncomfortable to wear after about 15 minutes. Um, and not visually uncomfortable for me. I like, I can't handle VR sets. Like I'm about ready to puke after 10 seconds. I'm talking about just around the head, the pressure it puts on the head, uh, over the top of it. It just, it becomes uncomfortable for me. And that's something to keep in mind. The battery hour off of a full charge is only three hours long. Uh, so it's good for doing like spot stuff in classes. However, if I were to try and implement this into a full curriculum schedule for kids, it definitely wouldn't be able to handle that. That's not to say the USB-C charging isn't fast on this device. In the few times where it's been dead and I've needed it at the end of class or the last 20 minutes of class, I've been able to charge it up enough to use. But again, three hours, so it's not long. The other thing that I'm not a big fan of, and I know it's meant for the development, and I'll showcase it here, but when you have this device on, depending on where this visor unit here is, um, if it's too far out or if it's like here or if it's too high up on your head or too far down on your head, it actually distorts the color that you'll see of the augmented images. To me, that becomes a problem because if you're using only one of these and you're trying to do rapid sharing of it, right? And then you're trying to set up each student off of that premise, it's not always gonna look right um, or it's not always going to be the best quality for them. 
Where do I see the HoloLens fitting in in education in the future? Well, again, it needs to become cost effective for schools. Even if it's a specialty piece of equipment that goes into a lab, it cannot be $3,000 a unit. That's why I, again, I'm praying that that HoloLens 3 brings it down to like a $300, $400 unit. I doubt it's going to happen because of how new the tech is, but that is something. The other thing is we need more developers for this. I took it upon myself to learn how to develop apps to make this useful in the classroom setting. And that's no small task using Unreal Engine as a person who's never developed a game for Unreal Engine. And it can be done, but you do need to devote time for it. So we need more people developing and publishing apps that can be utilized and are specific to the classroom. Well, this has been my educational look at the HoloLens 2. I know I didn't get too much into the tech specs of it. You can go find a million videos on the tech specs of this, but I hope you found this interesting or insightful or a way to look at the potentiality and the future of devices like this within the classroom. If you enjoyed today's video, please make sure you hit that like button and let me know in the comment section below, where do you think technology is going to get to in education to make that wow factor just a constant part of the day? If you are new to the channel, please again consider subscribing. And as always, thanks for watching.